Hi, everyone. My name is Bernadette Smith, and I am CEO of Equality Institute, and you are? I'm Patty Flynn. I'm Senior uh, DEI Strategy Consultant with Equality Institute. Welcome to Five Things in 15 Minutes, our weekly LinkedIn live show in which we bring you good vibes in DEI. Um, the idea of Five Things is to talk about what's going right related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Talk about the inspiration, the positive stories, the stories that can guide us and help us um, move forward in a positive direction. There's a lot of data out there about what's going wrong. There's a lot of data about um, negative statistics. and But there's also a lot of really good people doing and organizations doing really great stuff. And so that's what we talk about in Five Things in 15 Minutes, which is based off of my weekly newsletter, Five Things, that comes out every Saturday morning. So if you don't get the Five Things newsletter, go to the uh, link at the bottom and uh, we will catch you on uh, the newsletter. So Patty, um, today we are going to talk about media quite a bit. And specifically about a the initiatives of the, the some of the programming um, or audits, the work of the Gina Davis Center for Gender and in, Institute for Gender and Media, which has a program. It's an artificial intelligence based program called Spellcheck for Bias that's been developed in partnership with the University of Southern California. So what this uh, this system does, what Spellcheck for Bias does is it evaluates film and television scripts. This is primarily what it does for diverse representation and stereotypes. And it's very, very cool. I, I love that this program exists and I'm sure that the data sets that it uses hopefully are as unbiased as possible as well. Yeah, it's kind of wild to me that um, artificial intelligence can do this, um, but I think it's really good to be able to try to stop some of these representations before they even reach the screen. Um, you know, I, I think it's really important to understand how much, and we were having a discussion about this, not uh, not in this session, but um, about how uh, those kind of biases and, and um, how much media can play a role in setting up stereotypes and, and change of behavior. And um, so to be able to try and find that um, before it's before it reaches the screen is really, I think, important. Yeah, absolutely. And this program has been used by Disney for a few years now. But the part that made it into five things was about how it did a pilot with NBC Universal, specifically about um, this over the past year about increasing the representation and the accuracy of the representation of Latine um, content. So it worked well in ex in expanding Latine content, and now it's being the pilot is being brought out to all of the NBC Universal studios and production companies, and it's going to be analyzing the representation of characters by um, gender race, LGBTQIA status, disabilities, age, 50 plus, and also body type, which is really spectacular. I mean, these are the types of things that we might not even think about because they're unconscious and creators typically write about what they know, right? And the, the communities that they have personal experience with. So, you know, it's important that this exists to broaden the perspective and the representation that can create possibility models for, for young folks and, and others. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, like you can't, you can't be what you don't see. So, you know, the more that folks see themselves represented is the more that they believe that they can, they can do things. They can, they can be that kind of person. So it's, it's good. And it's good that it'll look at um, positive Look for positive representation. Yeah, I, I think that's great. I think it's great. And just the visibility really matters. Mm -hmm. Now, the Gina Davis Institute also did an audit of Lego. And Lego removed its gendered descriptions or gendered like for boys and for girls products a while ago. But there were still a lot of gender stereotypes in the actual products themselves. So lots of, you know, farmers who are male kind of thing, um, astronauts who are male kind of thing. 
And so the uh, Gina Davis Institute released the, or the they worked with, with Lego on this audit and created a, a plan for a more inclusive path forward in product design and marketing. So it even it even goes the work even goes to the level of the youngest kids and what they're seeing and mm -hmm. what they're experiencing, what they're playing with. And and I love that, too, that it's starting at that age. This includes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting that the, such a high percentage of boys and parents of boys afraid to have their sons play with girls' toys. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that finding that out and, and trying to understand that. Um, and, you know, I think that that's kind of a bigger picture thing. I don't know if Lego is going to solve that, but... Um, but it is interesting to see that, uh, whereas not really is concerned that the, the girls will play with any of those toys. And it's not it's not something that's um, as stigmatized. So um, being able to try to make these toys accessible, I mean, you know, like toys don't have a gender. So like, right. just just let kids be let be let kids be kids and, and raise boys the same as girls. So. Yeah. I, I don't think that Lego is going to solve toxic masculinity, <laughs> but I do think that there has been, uh, there is a generational shift is happening and it's going to uh -huh. continue to happen. And, um, it's, it's really cool to see. It really yeah. is. It's already changed so much. Okay. Um, so moving on the, fa the online fashion store ASOS, I think I'm pronouncing that right. To be honest, uh, has I think unveiled, it is <laughs> I'm not familiar with those products. Again, to be honest, unveiled some best in class gender neutral benefits, which I really appreciate that they've taken gender out of the equation, but benefits including PTO for fertility treatment, pregnancy loss, and menopause. And not only are the benefits great, but what ASO said is really important because it's about increasing awareness of the impact of such common life events. So part of the policy change is really about removing the stigma around these common life events and making sure employees are well cared for if they do happen to experience those events, regardless of what their gender is. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's such a good thing to say. I don't even know where to start on how positive this news is. I mean, it, it's um, it we're starting to see more and more companies move towards this um this level of benefit for um for parents and and for folks who are going through these kind of health issues and um i really i i can't even begin to say how positive it is and you know like i'm working on some assessment questions and and I'm going to have to rewrite some because I think that this this will help set some new standards as far as, you know, what type of benefits are offered to employees and potential employees. Um, you know, it's it's a way for them to show that uh, that people in all these different stages um, have needs and, and that they matter. And it, it's definitely a big positive. I mean, they, you know, they don't have a, it's not an inconsequential sized company. It's 3,800 folks over in the UK and, you know, uh, people going through pregnancy loss is, you know, that that's heart wrenching. And, and that, you know, I, I like I saw that and, you know, it made my heart feel good that, you know, they get the opportunity to, to properly go through that process. So, um, so good yeah. on ASOS. Absolutely. They're not the first company to expand their, their PTO for pregnancy loss. There have been a few others that I've written about recently. But um, what I think, I've never seen any that includes menopause, not that I've personally right. seen. And I think that's really significant as well. Um, so big props, big props. All right. So next up, I don't talk about public policy too much in five things, but this is a pretty, pretty significant one. The state of California has a new law that gives employees the right to speak out against their employer if they've experienced harassment or discrimination, 
even if they've already signed non-disclosure agreements. So it's essentially taking some of the bite out of an NDA that a lot of companies have used for years to silence employees. And, uh, and so it's a really significant law that reduces the impact of NDAs and can and has prevented more, it has caused more employees to sort of suffer in silence. So mm -hmm. it's a really significant policy that I wonder if we'll start to see in other states. Uh, yeah, California does tend to get a little ahead of the curve on, on a lot of issues. And, and we'll see if this rolls out to other states. I mean, I, I would imagine that there are some states like our state, Illinois, would, would consider something like this. I know that there's other states that are not, not going to go this direction. Um, but I really do think that it's important because, you know, you're looking at situations that are not, um, that are, that are, that are not good that need to be in the sunlight and whether or not someone signs an NDA, I mean, that's clearly a, a cover your backside, um, uh, move by a company. Um, but you know, it, it, what it does is it protects those folks who are doing those kind of things, you know, like somebody gets a settlement, um, they get, they get paid to be quiet. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't affect the opportunity for folks to be reimbursed for their suffering. Um, and so that's, that would be my only concern, but I think it, you know, like shining light on this could stop this type of behavior. Sure. It, I think it absolutely will. And, um, you know, it, I'm sure that the, the standard for what is considered harassment or racism will be interesting to see what's, what is, what's established there. Um, but it's only a positive thing. I personally would love to see Washington state, uh, release, uh, <laughs> pass this kind of law as well with some really major employers over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, New York, New York would be a big one. Um, mm -hmm. Last up this week is Target. So Target is always one of my favorite companies to follow. And what I've always loved about them is their approach to DEI is very comprehensive. It is very inclusive 360 because it's, it's always focused on not just HR, but also procurement and supplier diversity and marketing and all of it. And so I think they're, they do so many things really well. Um, one of their new uh, announcements is that they, they have an internal environmental sustainability program and it's to help their vendors, their suppliers elevate and really get more into learn how to produce better, more sustainable products. And so they have a very a new specific cohort of this program specifically for women and BIPOC owned businesses in the per beauty and personal care space. So this matters because it's not only educating the suppliers so that they can then produce a better, more sustainable product, but those products are also going to be more in demand and they can charge a more premium for them. I mean, that's just consumer data, right? And so it can increase the profitability of those of those companies and it's all and it's elevating them. It's 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 sort of creating the win win, not only for the environment, but also for the suppliers. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of sustainability. I um, I love to see this move and I love that they're embracing, you know, uh, a, a group of folks that I think are a little bit more nimble to be able, you know, they're smaller companies, they're, um, and, and they're doing kind of two things at once that are both, I think, positive for the future. Um, you know, I know what we, I, I was, as I was reading this, I was like, haven't we already talked about this? But, and we did, we talked, you and I have actually talked about this on this show about um, their general push to, to get more black creators and, and, Mm -hmm. And to work with more, um, I think the black media was what we were talking about at, at some point too. And um, so tying them into this other, this other part of a sustainability movement um, really, I think will help, like you said, it, you know, higher margins potentially um, and better product placement. Um, mm -hmm. All those things matter. And, and those are important in retail and, that differentiation will help 
um, really push that. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see that. You said and, that so much better than I did. Oh God. Well, I, I, I felt like I wandered around it, but I mean, also it's, you know, like they're, they're working with these and in, in supporting these businesses like individually to, to work through these processes to it. You know, you, there's a lot to be said with working with mentors and working with, um, you know, like these businesses get the opportunity to work very much more closely with target, uh, you know, which is, massive retailer. Um, yeah. The visibility, so, the exposure, the education, all of it yeah, is, is incredibly yeah. important and valuable. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me, Patty. Thank you everyone who's tuning in now or later. Um, if you don't already get it, please join the Equality Institute newsletter at five things at the equality com slash join. And we will see you next week. Thanks everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.